Welcome to this video on digital modulations. In this video, we'll dive into the fundamentals of how digital data is transmitted using modulation techniques. We'll begin by answering the question, what is digital modulation? Then, we'll explore the four key types of digital modulation, ASK, PSK, FSK, and QAM. After that, we'll introduce constellation diagrams and explain the in-phase I and quadrature Q components. Finally, we'll move into MATLAB simulations to analyze modulated signals, generate constellation diagrams, and examine the impact of noise on the symbol error rate. In telecommunications, modulation is the process of encoding information by altering one or more properties of a carrier wave using a separate signal known as the modulation signal. The key properties of the carrier wave that can be modified include its amplitude, which forms the basis of amplitude modulation AM, its frequency, used in frequency modulation FM, and its phase, which is the principle behind phase modulation PM. In digital modulation, an analog carrier signal is modulated by a discrete signal. The carrier signal's changes are selected from a finite set of M possible symbols. For example, in binary phase shift keying BPSK, only two symbols are used, represented by a 180 degree phase shift in the carrier wave. The most common digital modulation techniques are amplitude shift keying ASK, frequency shift keying FSK, phase shift keying PSK, and quadrature amplitude modulation QAM. Amplitude shift keying ASK, modulates the carrier wave by varying its amplitude between a finite number of states. For example, in binary ASK, a 0 can be represented by a signal with an amplitude of 0.5, while a 1 is represented by an amplitude of 1. Frequency shift keying FSK, modulates the signal by switching between a finite number of frequencies. For instance, a 0 might be encoded as a signal with a frequency of 2 Hz, while a 1 is represented by a frequency of 1 Hz. Phase shift keying PSK, encodes data by varying the phase of the carrier wave. In its simplest form, binary PSK, there are two phase states shifted by 180 degrees. Finally, quadrature amplitude modulation QAM, combines both amplitude and phase modulation to encode bits, allowing for more efficient data transmission. The most common way to represent a digitally modulated signal is through a constellation diagram. This diagram visualizes the signal as a two-dimensional scatter plot in the complex plane, where the x-axis represents the in-phase component I and the y-axis represents the quadrature component Q. For example, in this QPSK constellation diagram, all symbols have the same amplitude but differ in phase. The first symbol shifts the carrier wave's phase by 45 degrees, representing the bits 0, 0. The second symbol shifts it by 135 degrees for 0, 1, the third by 225 degrees for 1, 0, and the last by 315 degrees for 1, 1. At the receiver side, the signal is often affected by impairments in the communication channel. For example, Thermal noise can cause the symbols in the constellation diagram to shift slightly from their original positions. If the noise is too strong, symbols may drift into the wrong regions, leading to detection errors. Now let's go to MATLAB. We'll explore digital modulations by analyzing the modulated signal, plotting the constellation diagram, and measuring the impact of noise on the symbol error rate. First, we'll clear the workspace and close any open plots. Then, we'll define the parameters, starting with the modulation type, choosing from ASK, PSK, QAM, or FSK. Next, we set the modulation order, which determines the number of possible symbol states, and initialize it to 2. Finally, we generate random symbols for transmission. In the next section, we will generate modulated symbols based on the chosen modulation type. Let's start with ASK modulation. We'll use a maximum amplitude of 1 and divide the range between 0 and 1 by the modulation order. For binary ASK, this results in amplitude levels of 0.5 for 0 and 1 for 1. Now let's move on to PSK. Here, we'll use MATLAB's PSK modulation function, where the first argument is the generated symbols and the second argument is the modulation order. Similarly, we can generate modulated symbols for QAM using MATLAB's QAM modulation function. If you want to learn more about PSK, QAM and their MATLAB functions, check out my dedicated videos covering these modulation techniques in detail. 
for the moment, we'll skip over FSK modulation and return to it later. Finally, let's visualize the constellation diagram. The code is now complete, let's run it and examine the results. We can also switch the modulation type to PSK and observe the differences. In the plots, you'll notice two distinct states representing 0 and 1. On the left, the amplitude varies, while on the right, the amplitude remains constant, but the phase shifts. Now, let's move on to the next step, where we'll create the modulated signal. First, we need to generate the time base for the signal so that each symbol lasts one second. We'll also add the sampling frequency to the parameters section and set it to 100 Hz. Next, we will generate the I and Q carrier components using cosine and sine waves. We'll repeat each symbol 100 times to ensure they match the length of the carrier wave. Then, we modulate the signal using the symbols along with the I and Q components. Finally, let's plot the signal. The code is ready. Let's run it. We'll also try ASK and observe the effect. As you can see in the plots, with ASK the modulated signal changes in amplitude, while with PSK the phase is altered. Now, let's try out 16 QAM modulation. To do this, we'll change the modulation type to QAM and set the modulation order to 16. We'll also generate more symbols to represent each possible state. As you can see in the plots, with 16 QAM, both the amplitude and phase of the modulated signal change. In the next part, we'll add some noise to the signal. We'll use the random normal function to generate the noise and scale it by the noise level, which we'll define in the parameters section. Additionally, let's create a copy of the original symbols to calculate the symbol error rate. To do this, we'll demodulate the distorted symbols based on the modulation type. For ASK, we'll check if the amplitude of each distorted symbol falls within the correct range. For PSK and QAM, we'll use MATLAB's demodulation functions. Next, we'll calculate the number of errors by comparing the demodulated symbols with the original ones and then compute the symbol error rate. Both values will be displayed. Finally, we'll plot the constellation diagram to show the distorted symbols. The code is ready, let's run it using 4QAM with 1024 symbols.
As you can see, with a noise level of 0.25, 7 errors occurred. These errors are also visible on the constellation diagram. In the final part, let's experiment with FSK modulation. The FSK modulation function in MATLAB differs from PSK and QAM, as it returns the modulated signal directly instead of the symbols. As before, we'll pass the symbols to transmit and the modulation order. The next parameter specifies the frequency separation, while the last two parameters define the number of samples per symbol and the sampling frequency. We won't display the constellation diagram or add noise to the FSK modulated signal. To handle this, we'll define a helper variable to check if the modulation is FSK. Finally, we'll create the modulated signal using the I and Q carrier components. The code is ready, let's test it with six symbols. As you can see in the plot, 0 and 1 are modulated using different frequencies, which are separated by 5 Hz. And that's all for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. I'm happy to help. You can find the code link in the description. If you found this tutorial helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. See you next time.